All right. For all who are here, hello. For everyone who's here, please just close your eyes for a moment. Brahmanandam paramasukadam kevalam yanamurukhim dvandvaditam gaganatsatusham tatparmasya dilaksham yekam nityam vimalamachalam sarvadi sakshibhutam avaditam trigunaraditam sadgurum tam namami I bow to God, I bow to my Gurudev, Baba Hari Haranandaji, I bow to my Guruji, Paramahansa Pregnanandaji, bowing to all the masters of our lineage, saints and sages of all religions, all throughout time, everywhere. And I bow to all of you, the living power of God. Jai Guru, Jai Guru everyone. So happy to be back to be with you. I feel like I've been away. But we're here at, at a very auspicious and special time. Guruji will be coming soon. So there's no never a class before Guruji. But what we will do, we'll have a little chat, a little conversation about some things that, that are represented in this, in this time, time of foundation day at the Mother Center. This center, founded by Gurudev, was the only one, the only ashram that Gurudev founded in North America. Even though he had been in North America since 1974, still, he only made this one ashram. So many centers, but this one ashram, where was his, where was his last abode? Since then, if you look at the work that Guruji has had organized, administered, and directed, you see we have ashram in so many places, Chicago, Denver, Texas, Seattle, and even down here in Sao Paulo, Brazil. And if you ever come down, please come and say hello. We hope that this is the beginning of other ashrams in South America as well. But I, I'd like to talk a bit about what is the importance of an ashram? Well, you can say it is a place. It is a place where we do three things. It's a place of service to God and gurus. It's a place of serving our own sadhana, our own development through instruction and practice and meditation. It's also a place of serving the wider community. So many people out there. But if you think of it as a place, that's only totally part of the story. In essence, it's a misconception. Yes, there is a, there's a physical space. It's a headquarters for all of this work. But it, it represents so much more. As you know, Yogananda Ji would say, you should carry an ashram inside you. Inside you means, yes, a place of your own inner peace and calmness and quiet, which sometimes an ashram is. A place of, of determination, of service to help others. And if you think about, if you think about a need to help others. The other day I was watching a, a, a short video clip of uh, Guruji and, and the question was posed to him, why is it that there are so many cases of life? We are isolated from other people. We live an unnatural kind of life. 
But let me tell you, that video that he made was 2019, before the pandemic. The pandemic has come since then. If you think we were isolated before, imagine now. Imagine now. You all know schools for children were on hold. Teachers had to teach by Zoom. Not the best way to be directly related with your students. People feel anxiety. They are worried. They're concerned all the time, all the time. Well, death is around the door. It always is. But with COVID, it's been a little more. Many of us, myself included, we have suffered some deaths in the, in the, within family members. So that adds to the anxiety. So there's fear. There's worry. If we were isolated before, imagine now with social distancing and putting on a mask. Isolated. Living on Zoom like we're living now. I thank God for Zoom. But we're more isolated. So many people with a more sedentary life. So have starting to have physical issues. The point being is that people need help. This is what an ashram does. We have noticed, for example, down here in Brazil, and also since we give assistance to the Hispanic countries, we have seen so many people coming interested in satsangs to learn something about Kriya because, because they need help. People need some guidance. People need a method, a philosophy, a plan. People need to have their questions answered. People need some comfort. People need some encouragement. People need love. So, so many people have been coming exacerbated by this particular phase. And that is a reason we are here. Our help our comfort, our guidance is through Kriya Yoga. We can teach that. We can guide. We can encourage. We can help. And that's what we do. But since I said, since I said that ashram is a physical place, but it's more than a physical place, what is meant by that? If you have an ashram inside you, then you should be projecting that. Not that you go around preaching, but each one of us as a model of this practice, of this philosophy, represents that through our, our attitude. Some compassion, some kindness, some patience. Oh, do we need that? Huh? Patience, helpfulness. Each one of us, if you think of so many that are out there, Right now I see 172 are here, 172 sources of love, sources of compassion, sources of kindness, sources of patience. When people ask you, what do you do? You say, well, I practice Kriya Yoga. How can I learn? He will show you how to learn. So this particular time to break away from this isolation which Guruji was already warning us. If you go back and check on YouTube, you'll see that video. So interesting. Uh, he was saying we live an unnatural life. So each one of us, as an ashram, an individual ashram, we can be a source of help. Just as we ourselves are helped through an ashram, a center of learning, a center of dedication, of center of more conscious way of living. And since, since the topic today is, uh, is the foundation day of the Miami Ashram of the Mother Center, I would just like to talk about that center for a little bit. I have such affection for that place. I recall back at the beginning when it was all overrun there was so much vegetation. There was so there was it was a wilderness at the beginning. 
Some of you, maybe some old times, you may remember that. But that's what it was. I remember the first time I went there, where it was very, very raw. The first day I got there, I was a German Kriyaban came to me and he said, oh, he said, John Baba, can you help me tomorrow, tomorrow morning? I'll get some machetes. And would you please help me cut a path to the lake? I said, what lake? He said, oh, there's a lake behind all of this vegetation. There is a lake. I said, sure. Okay. So that's what we did next day cutting and hacking and cutting and hacking and making our way to this lake, which I did not know it existed. You could not see it like you can now. Guru Dev came and he began changing that place. You think of Guru Dev, but not just Guru Dev. He, even, he was an example of that, but Guru as, as a divine architect, he had a plan he would have a meditation hall later, and he designed it, and it was built according to his instructions and plan, the strength of that, plus the other buildings were there, he acquired them, he developed them, there was the barn for meditation, all of this. So this was Gurudev as a divine architect. He made sure that it, there was a property filled with fruit trees. So it's a place. And yet I'm telling you, it's not a place. It's a place with fruit and flowers and very lovely and very sweet. But don't you know, the guru is also creating this inside you. Inside each one. The guru, not just Guru Dev, not just Guruji, the guru as the principle. This is what the guru does. Guru comes in and he makes us fertile within and makes us more beautiful. Flowers and fruit trees, right? These are the things that everyone can enjoy. This is the work of the guru. We see the external work in the ashram and there's the inner work constantly, constantly. And he teaches us with every breath. It's inside. So guru is the, is the divine gardener divine gardener. Outside, as you've seen, and inside each one of us. If you perceive, if you look inside. Remember Guru Dev always asks, what is your change? So you have to look inside and see how the practice has made you transform. Eliminating things that are not essential, just like weeding. If you were weeding a garden, you would remove the weeds and you would plant some good seeds. This happens inside us as well. This is what Guru is doing. Guru, this is what Satguru is doing. Satguru is doing this inside us. Again, when I think of that wonderful ashram, in a sense as a metaphor of what is happening inside all of us, I'm reminded again of the statue if you just bear with me one moment, I'm going to show something that I remember with such affection at the ashram. I hope you can see this. This is Guru's statue, Guru Dev's statue. You go into the hall, you see this beautiful, strong statue. And, and it was brought to Guru in clay, he looked and he said, hmm, it needs some improvement. It needs some work. So this is in, in Guru Dev's room. He would work with his own hand, correcting, making improvements, eliminating imperfections until it came to the, to the place that he liked. When we, look, when we look at that, we say, oh, Guru is also a divine artist divine artist. Just as it says here, God made men and women in his own image. We all are image of God. Even in this body form, you must realize your formless nature. So there is the body form. We must realize the formless, the purusha, which is inside. This is why I say, Guru is working. He has this ashram. You see the expression outside, but he's working inside so that we change.
so that we change. I'm going to remove this for a moment. And again, the guru is this divine artist. He said, oh, so he's making us in an image. But we know from history, when you look back at the famous story of Michelangelo, Michelangelo, when he was given, he was given the, the task of making a statue of David, he was the third artist who was asked to do that. The other two had failed. So he was asked. So he went out to the quarry, the marble quarry, and he looked at the stones and there was one stone, one marble stone, huge, that had been discarded because it was filled with flaws and defects. And he saw that, he said, I want that one. People asked him, why, why that one? There's so many flaws. He said, no, 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 no. I see what's inside that. I already see the image inside that. He sees Guru as a divine artist with us. Guru sees who we really are. He sees how we have been all covered up with our ignorance and wrong identity and foolishness. And when we say, well, who am I? Guru says, I will show you and I will help you. This is Guru. So Guru is chipping away, just like with a hammer and a chisel, chipping away this outside, which is not allowing the inner image to appear. This image is who we truly are. We are divine in essence. Gurus have always said that. But we think, oh no, not really, not me. I'm very aware of all my negatives. Oh boy, I have so many, so many. Still, Guru says no. We keep working at it. And Guru is chipping. The Guru is fixing. With the breath and with love and Kriya, this is what Guru is doing. Constantly. He's helping us see our real nature. Our real nature. You don't know who you are. Guru knows who you are. It takes us lifetimes, no? Lifetimes. But you remember from the moment of your initiation, the moment the Yogacharya bowed, put forehead on your feet, he made that promise, the solemn promise, in the name of Gurus. Yogacharya is doing everything in the name of Gurus. He's not Guru. In the name of Gurus, he is promising to guide, protect, help, until your final liberation. Knowing that it may take some time. But once the promise is made, once Guru, Satguru has made this promise to you, then it is solemn. It is solemn. Even if you decide you don't want to practice anymore, the Gurus have already made their promise to you and they will be watching. They will be guiding. In a moment's notice, they'll be reaching out and helping you. So why should we wait? Always remember, Guru comes, Guru comes with this spiritual treasure, a spiritual treasure with hands open saying, here, my child, take it, practice, do it. Your success is guaranteed, guaranteed for you to perceive who you have always been. The whole time you have always been your mistake is that you think you are something small. But there is purpose to life. There is purpose. Nobody was born for nothing. We came for a reason, each one of us. And Guru, sent by the divine Guru, God himself has sent an earthly Guru to help us, to push us inside so we can perceive the Guru, the soul, which has always been there. Always been there. We've been living in ignorance. So Guru is chipping away at this ignorance, just like Michelangelo, until he found David inside. The beautiful statue of David. He was waiting to liberate that statue. Guru is waiting to liberate 
who we truly are. This is true. This is true. And we have forgotten. Many times we don't realize how fortunate we are. And many times we don't realize that we are, we are part of this. Part of this means God, Guru have come and they have offered all of this. But it's up to us to do our part. Hmm? Guru will move heaven and earth to help you. But what he can't do is what you bring to it, let's put it that way, is your determination, your discipline, your practice. You say, I may stumble and fall a million times, but I will never give up. Never give up. And the more we do that, the more we can truly help those around us. Babaji says, be fearless. Be fearless. So even in a challenging time like now, which we all have faced, the entire planet, even down here, so high, problems with COVID, all kinds of climate change problems, all kinds of economic problems, people have lost work, all kinds of political up upheaval. This is, not, this is not the realm of one country or another. This is pretty much all over. So we are seeing this all around us. So people are coming. And that's why we're here, all of us. We are here to reach out and help them, and help them. We help them with what we know. You can only help people with what you have and what you know. And there is this path that is guided by the realized. As the symbol of Sri Yukteswar, this is the path that is guided by the realized. So we follow that. We follow that with confidence. Step by step, step by step. Sometimes leaps, sometimes baby steps. It really doesn't matter as long as the steps are in the same direction. If they are in the direction of God, then we're all right. It's just like, just like a mother. Many of you are mothers. You know that your little baby, when it's starting to walk, it may stumble and fall and mother's still saying, come, 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 don't give up, don't give up. Baby falls down, maybe cries, you dust off the knee, you put the baby back, stand back a little bit and say, come, 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 come. This is divinity. This is God. If God created motherhood itself, then God truly is the divine mother. You can feel that when you go to the ashram. Ashram is a beating heart. So, we should use that love to reach out to those around us. We have Guruji coming. We are so fortunate on this auspicious time. I, so I just want to tell you a little, little story and we'll go right into a session with Guruji. Many years back in New York, in the early 80s, some of you may know, Elizabeth Ma, John Williams, Suresh Baba Badrayu Baba. Remember those early, early days when there was no ashram, there was nothing like that. We would meditate in a small art gallery down near Canal Street. It was on Grand Street, actually. It's called the Chuck Levitan Gallery. So we would get there and we would clear away the paintings and things. We'd put up pictures of the lineage and we sit and we would practice. When Guru Dev would come to New York, sometimes he would stay for a period, he would always come to guide the meditation, especially on Sunday morning, sometimes Wednesday evening too, but for sure, if he was in town, he would come Sunday morning. So I have so many recollections of that, but particularly one, which was a recollection of a scolding. And I'll tell you about that. So we were, everybody's sitting down waiting, and maybe there were 20 of us, 25, I don't know. And we're waiting for Guru Dev to come. And he was late. We would start it usually at nine o'clock and he was late. So 9.05, 9.10, time is going. 
and Baba is late. So we, a bunch of young ones, we start to talk with each other, a little gossip, a little joking. Sometimes it got louder. Even me, I had a mouth that loved to, loved to work. And we're all talking and doing our little things. And then I noticed from behind the door was Gurudev standing, ramrod straight. And then immediately Gurudev stepped in and with a stern voice he said, is this a market or a meditation hall? And we all said, you prepare for the teacher to come. You prepare for the teacher to come. So we learn, I learn, teacher is coming. We have to prepare with him, prepare with him. If it's the physical teacher who is coming, like now we will be preparing a moment. That's one thing. But even when you sit and you meditate, you're sitting and meditating, you are preparing your inner environment. Just like all the work that we're doing inside, you are preparing your inner environment for the guru to come. Just like you would in a place, you would sweep, you would clean, you would make it nice. If it was a holiday, you would make special food in the hope that your guest comes, the same that we do with guru, the same that we do with our teacher. So now, I humbly request that we all close our eyes for a couple of minutes. Guruji is coming. So we will prepare for the teacher to come, shall we? Everyone, please just close your eyes for a moment. Feeling the inner breath. and loving God in every breath. He is breathing in us, this breath is his. And God so kind is coming to give us instruction and to give us darshan. Today we will have darshan from Guruji who came from a long distance. to bless, to bless us, us, to bless our families, our children, our friends, to bless those who are sick, those who are struggling from one reason or, or another. His darshan is for all that. This is an auspicious moment, a very auspicious moment. Keeping the eyes closed, Please take a slow, long, deep inhalation. Inhale up, hold, and bend forward as far as you can. Exhale, exhale. Ganamutam Guru Murti, Pusha Mulam Guru Padam, Mantra Mulam Guru Vakyam, Moksha Mulam Guru Krupa. Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo Maheshwaraha, Guru Saksha Param Brahma, Tasmai Sri Gurave Namaha. O oh God, O oh Guru, you bless me, guide me, so that every step I take is a step in your direction. Give me discipline, give me perseverance and give me more love so that I can perceive you everywhere, in everything, in everyone, and within myself as well.